our position in Christ. Because of our eternal hope and secure relationship with God through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, we should never cease to praise and worship Him. Here's Gene. In many respects, what we're going to read here is a doxology. It's a praise. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the way He begins. Now let me just summarize for you with four bullet points what our position is in Christ. We have been chosen in Christ. He says, for He chose us in Him. And get this, mind-boggling. He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world. And one of the little phrases you're going to see throughout this epistle is in Him. In Him. In Christ. In Christ. He chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless in His sight. And that little phrase there, we'll come back to it, to be holy and blameless in His sight is not something for heaven, it's something for earth. And we'll come back to that. It's very, very important. Because this is really where chapter 4 begins, to be holy and blameless in His sight. Although He introduces us to this concept immediately. Secondly, in this opening paragraph, we're redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. In Him, there it is again, in Christ, we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of His grace. That word grace is going to come up again. Very powerful concept in the book of Ephesians. Number three, uh, going to verse five, we're adopted into the family of God. He predestined us to be adopted through Jesus Christ for Himself. He is our Father, we are His sons, we are His daughters. He chose us to be a part of the family of God. Number four, we are sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. He moves from the Father who chose us, to the Son who redeemed us, to the Spirit who has sealed us. And He says, in Him, that is in Christ, there it is again, Jesus is the focus of all of this and the outworking of it. In Christ you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in Him, when you believed, when you believed, you were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. Now that is a beautiful, beautiful statement of our security in Jesus Christ. We are sealed with the Spirit of God until the day of redemption. That is the day when we're transported into His image. Now, the reflection and the, the response really zeroes in on this concept of praise and worship. As we consider these great eternal realities, these realities that we've just looked at, being chosen in Christ, redeemed in Christ, adopted into His family, uh, sealed by His Holy Spirit, as we consider these great eternal realities, how should they impact our relationship with God? Well, all the way through, particularly in the three segments of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, here's how he ends those paragraphs. To the praise of His glorious grace. Because God has chosen us, redeemed us. Moving on, in verse 12 he says, that all of this might bring praise to His glory. Praise to God. And finally, after the statement about the Holy Spirit, to the praise of His glorious grace. In other words, Paul himself is worshiping with his doxology as he writes it. But as we read it, it ought to lead us into the presence of God. It leads us to the place of worship, adoration, for the what He has done in our wonderful calling in Christ. And so that's the way he begins this letter, dealing with our position in Jesus Christ. Because of our eternal hope, and that's what he's talking about here, because of our eternal hope and secure relationship with God through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, we should never cease to praise and worship Him. He ought to be in the forefront of our mind consistently. And of course, basically, he's talking not just about personal praise, he's talking about corporate praise as believers. And as you, as you walk through this letter, you see this corporateness coming out, this community, this relationship, and how we respond to Jesus Christ. 